Carnage gives birth to a new symbiote spawn and battles Spider-Man through the streets of New York in the origin of Scorn, Daughter of Carnage. What's up guys, Roman from RNS Entertainment here, and welcome to another episode of Comic History, the weekly video series where I explain, retell, and give context to the iconic storylines, origins, and events in the world of comics. In today's episode, we're going to be concluding our three-part series on the return of Carnage in Carnage Family Feud, a five-issue miniseries focused on returning Carnage to the Marvel Universe after eight years of being thought dead, after being ripped in half and thrown into space by the Sentry in Brian Michael Bendis' New Avengers. Family Feud also introduces new symbiote character Scorn, Carnage's second offspring after spawning the Toxin symbiote in Venom vs. Carnage, which I have covered in a previous video. It also leads directly into Carnage USA, a fan-favorite Carnage miniseries by the same creative team. We covered the first part of this story in Return of Carnage, which saw Maximum Carnage characters Shriek and Doppelganger resurface, while a competitor of Iron Man suddenly began developing high-tech suits and prosthetics powered by the recovered Carnage symbiote. In Part 2, Origin of She-Carnage, we saw the details of Carnage's return and witnessed it escape and become temporarily bonded with Tannis Neves, Shriek's psychiatrist from Ravencroft Asylum and the eventual host of the Scorn symbiote. The Carnage symbiote uses and controls Tannis to fight its way past Spider-Man, Iron Man, and a fleet of symbiote tech-suited guards to eventually rejoin with its true host, Cletus Cassidy. Our story begins with the newly rejoined Carnage ripping through the streets of New York, murdering random civilians as he goes, laughing and declaring that he's going to show Mikey Hall, the man responsible for both reclaiming and recovering Cletus' body following his encounter with the Sentry, and for imprisoning the Carnage symbiote to siphon off bits of it to fuse with high-tech armor and prosthetics in order to create products that he believed would rival Iron Man. Hall's symbiote-suited men attempt to stop Carnage, who says that he can't believe they were stupid enough to put him in their clothes. Speaking through the tech of one of the armors before crunching the man's arm in half, snapping the spine of another and breaking them like toys, while Spider-Man and Iron Man rush out in horror to stop him. Carnage forces one of Hall's men to jump in front of Iron Man's repulsor blast, and then continues to massacre them in as violent a way as possible, with screams and squelching noises signifying a brutal end for the men who stole from Carnage. One of Hall's men tries to escape, futilely screaming out for Spider-Man to help him, but immediately is sucked into the growing mass of bodies and armor that Carnage is becoming, dying and screaming as Carnage forms a new body out of the tech and corpses. Meanwhile, in Hall Industries, Shriek and Doppelganger loom over Tannis Neves, who after being temporarily controlled by the Carnage symbiote was thrown aside and knocked unconscious. Tannis calls Shriek Francis and asks her why she's dressed in her costume, which Shriek says is to look good for her boyfriend. Shriek grabs Tannis by the throat, accusing her of attempting to steal Cletus from her by telling her that he was bad for her all of these years, but then sees her prosthetic arm and stands up saying that it doesn't make her special, or mean that Cletus loves her more than Shriek. Tannis asks what she's talking about, and Shriek says not to act stupid, pointing to her arm and saying that she's carrying Carnage's baby. This is the first appearance of the Scorn symbiote, which was birthed while Carnage was attached to Tannis, and left behind in a similar manner to Venom leaving the Carnage symbiote behind in the Origin of Carnage, which you can check out in my Origin of Carnage episode. Tannis says to get it off of her, that it was asking her to join with its mind, and Shriek slams Tannis against the wall, saying that this was how she felt when Tannis had treated her in Ravencroft, trying to get inside her head and change what she really is. Meanwhile, the giant mecha corpse Carnage is easily fighting off Spider-Man and Iron Man, ranting in what is essentially heavy metal lyrics about how he's an ocean of hate breaking over their city, man and reiterating that right now all he wants is to get at Michael Hall. Spider-Man says that Carnage had tried to take his city before and failed, and in response, Carnage grabs Spider-Man and says that if he likes jokes, to watch this, revealing one of the dead men's skulls from inside his armor and making it say, Hi Spider-Man, look at me, I'm dead! and then chuckles to himself at having been a successful troll. Spider-Man then freaks the fuck out, leaping at Carnage and calling him a sick hillbilly. The Scorn symbiote continues to fight with Tannis, begging her to feed it and to join with it, with Shriek constantly egging her on and urging her to succumb to her dark side. 
Tannis leaps forward into the broken glass, grabbing a shard and hacking away at the symbiote until it lies severed on the ground. Shriek cheers Tannis on while she cuts off her arm and then casually picks it up off the ground, saying, look at you. Spider-Man leaps onto Cletus, ripping through his armor and saying that he can't hide in there, that Spider-Man won't stop until he tears Cletus' head off for what he's done, but then leaps out of the way at the last moment as Iron Man smashes a car into Carnage. The fight is then interrupted by a massive sonic blast that blows Spider-Man and Iron Man away but leaves Carnage standing. Carnage turns to see Shriek, who has taken Tannis' arm and attached it to herself with the Scorn symbiote, backed up by a murderous mob who are mind-controlled by her powers into committing unspeakable acts of violence and hate. Shriek hangs off of Carnage, asking if he missed her while he plucks her off, saying that he doesn't have time until he hunts down Mikey Hall. They immediately start to have a married couple argument where Shriek gets offended that Carnage didn't notice her new face, and Carnage yells that he can't even kill some dudes for five minutes without her talking his ear off. When she asks him how long he's going to be, he sighs and extends his blade arms, saying not long and to make the civilians kill each other if she got bored. Carnage spears a car and throws it at the heroes, leaping on Spider-Man and demanding to know where Hall was. This gives Iron Man the time to prepare a massive attack, saying that Carnage was just wearing cheap knockoffs of him and had no idea how many weapons he had. He then proceeds to shoot Carnage with all of them, blasting Carnage's giant mech body through a brick wall. Tannis wakes up and her mind is silent. At first she's ecstatic, having cut off her own arm to buy herself control over her mind from the symbiote. She looks up to a horror show, smelling and hearing and witnessing a bloody, brutal riot with the beat of a man's head being bashed into the pavement, sounding like drums as she tries to get up. She sees Shriek standing in the epicenter of the riot, the symbiote arm raised high with Doppelganger at her side, screaming to burn everything down. Tannis thinks of the dog she had when she was little, and how she didn't let them put it down. She had told them all of God's creatures could be saved. Now she sees the creature she hadn't let Ravencroft put down, spreading psychic bile to a group of murderers and laughing at Tannis while she does it. Tannis didn't let them put Shriek to sleep, and she is ashamed. Shriek lifts Tannis up with the symbiote arm, telling her to look at the madness her star patient had spread, to look while the crowd murders each other and enjoy the spoils of all her hard work. Tannis shuts her eyes and keeps repeating no, saying it over and over while Shriek rants. Tannis thinks to herself that she's not talking to Francis, she's talking to the symbiote, which though still obeying Shriek had begun to speak to her, telling Tannis that Shriek scared it and begging her to let it come home to its true host. Meanwhile, Iron Man attempts to hack into the technology in Carnage's mech body, which entirely backfires as the Carnage symbiote begins fusing to Iron Man's artificial intelligence instead, infiltrating his systems and preparing to murder him just like he did Hall's men. It may seem random that Carnage is able to integrate himself into Iron Man's artificial intelligence, but it was actually established about a decade before this book existed that the Carnage symbiote can travel through computer systems and even the internet itself in Carnage Unleashed, which is a ridiculous miniseries and commentary on the Maximum Carnage video game within the Marvel Universe that I will definitely cover in a future video. Shriek's mob turns on a school bus full of children, tipping it over as Shriek tells Tannis that they were going to rip into that bus and tear those kids apart, and that she had even seen them eat children during their last rampage in Maximum Carnage. Shriek grins insanely and asks Tannis what she thinks about that, and Tannis finally says yes. The symbiote immediately turns on Shriek, gripping her by the throat and changing to a distinct purple coloration as it bonds with Tannis who allows the symbiote completely into her thoughts and mind as the bond is complete, with Tannis lifting Shriek into the air by her throat and stating that they are Scorn. Doppelganger leaps forward to defend Shriek, but is easily punted away by Scorn, whining and running back to Carnage to alert him of the new danger. Scorn grabs Shriek by the hair, bending her neck back and aiming her at Carnage like a gun, demanding that she scream. Shriek begs Tannis to stop, saying that it's not Shriek anymore, just Francis but Scorn coldly tells her that she is not her doctor anymore, and that she will Shriek. At this point, Scorn uses her symbiote to activate the parts of Shriek's brain that control her powers, firing them at full blast at Carnage's mech body. Spider-Man takes advantage of this, hacking away at the remains of the armor with a parking meter, screaming that he's just getting started, and now it's just Cletus and him. The armor breaks open to reveal that the Carnage symbiote had taken Cletus' body to safety by escaping into the sewers, leaving only the last tendrils of the Carnage symbiote to mock Spider-Man one last time. Tannis walks toward the heroes, dragging Shriek by the hair. 
Realizing that she had bonded completely to the symbiote, Spider-Man turns in shock, as Tana says that she had a dog once, and that she didn't let them put it down. It had turned out to be violent, and had bitten her when she tried to pet it. The symbiote falls away from her face, and she says that some things needed to be put down, and so she had put Shriek down. Her symbiote returns to the prosthetic arm, and she asks Spider-Man how she can make it go away. He puts his hand on her shoulder and says that he's sorry, but with her completely bonding to it, it doesn't exactly work like that. Shriek is hospitalized and comatose, with Scorn having done something to her brain, leaving her a vegetable. And Tannis is admitted to Tony Stark's research facility to investigate options for using her symbiote to track Carnage, who had completely escaped. The story ends at the hideaway cabin of Michael Hall, where Carnage casually watches the news in a Lazy Boy, while Doppelganger gnaws and chews on the barely alive Hall. Carnage pets Doppel on the head, saying that he didn't want Hall dying just yet, and that his screams made for great thinking music while he contemplates his big comeback. And that is where we are wrapping up part three of our series on the return of Carnage, a fan favorite symbiote character and vessel for some of the most ridiculous and violent stories in the history of Marvel. The Zeb Wells Clayton Crane Carnage miniseries that brings Carnage back also manages to be a soft repeat of a lot of the characters and scenarios from Maximum Carnage in the more modern and graphically violent style of the mid-2000s. I personally love the origin of Scorn, Daughter of Carnage, and Tannis' character and point of view in the story specifically. Her setup very much mirrors the origin of Carnage's first spawn in Toxin, who joins with police officer Patrick Mulligan in Venom vs. Carnage. This miniseries also leads directly into one of my all-time favorite Carnage stories, Carnage USA, which as a sequel to this is perfect because it's by the same creative team of Wells and Crane. Carnage USA follows Carnage's plans to create the most bloody and expansive comeback possible, resulting in a horror show that involves all of the Avengers and a slew of symbiotes. And I will be starting a multi-part comic history series on it next week. Make sure to tune in next Monday for part one of Carnage USA. Subscribe to RNS Entertainment for weekly content, and come hang out on Wednesday and Friday for live podcasts discussing the new comics that came out this week and everything else in the world of entertainment. Also, give this video a thumbs up, leave me a comment letting me know what you thought of the origin of Scorn, and check out the comic history playlist for all the episodes we've done so far. That's it for today's video, guys, and I will see you all next time.